the, the, the major news that came out today is the Bears actually had a couple of signings over the past couple of days. And honestly, uh, they're signings that I really like. The first one, Ted Ginn Jr., um, he played with the Saints last year, the Speedster. He's he's getting up there in age. He's 35, um, but Ohio State products back in like 2007 or something. What do you think about this move? Yeah, I think with with Ted Ginn from uh, I kind of looked the at what Ohio the Saint- State. Yeah, of course, from the Ohio State University. Um, played early on in his career in Miami. And then, of course, had a little run with, I think he had a notable run when he was with uh, the 49ers. He had a decent kind of Carolina there. Yeah, Carolina, of course, um, with Cam Newton. That actually was a pretty good pairing. And, of course, I don't think it worked out quite as well as what people had (laughs) hoped in New Orleans. Um, I, I saw some Saints fans saying good riddance. But at the same time, I think that he brings a little something that isn't quite there in the offense, right? Like, this is truly Taylor Gabriel's replacement, you know? Um, I think that if he plays to what, like, his potential is, then it would be a a great addition. Um, We just really have to see, like, what we're getting, you know, with him. We're not really sure, but, you know, stay optimistic and hope that you actually get someone that can work well out of the slot here. You know, at this time right now, the contract deal details aren't um, released yet. That being said, I expect this to be a fairly low contract, um, very low numbers. Uh, obviously, for a player who's 35, you'd expect him to have slowed down a little bit. But I don't think speed is actually his issue. I think that, you know, he kind of lacks that physicality he had a little bit in the earlier time in his career. And that's the bigger issue. Um, as far as New Orleans Saints fans go, I, I kind of really don't care about their opinion on this move. Um, when he was brought in there, he was kind of brought in to be that true number two. And that's not really going to be a situation here. He's going to be our number three option at best. He's really probably going to be rotated with Cordell Patterson. And uh, the, ne- the next the uh, next wide receiver that we're going to mention, which is Trevor Davis, if he's on the roster. I mean, this, this Bears wide receiver core is loaded. He's really just coming here to provide a speed threat and not, not – he doesn't need to be that true number two guy, which is – a situation that I think is going to fit him very well at this point in his career, yeah. at least. I, I think the complementary receivers for the Bears, like they have a, a pretty decent like cast to like roll guys and like enough where you can really kind of get creative with the formations. I feel like, um, I, I guess I just kind of, I do want to see how some of these younger players, um, you know, kind of pan out a little bit, and you know, I'm curious to see how how quickly that Ted Ginn can really kind of get involved in the offense. Cause I think the earlier on in the season, the better, you know, you really kind of want to be able to flex, mm-hmm. flex like your wings and show how versatile the offense can be, you know? So if Ted Ginn can fit in quicker and get like into his role and really kind of figure it out as far as, you know, whoever he's receiving and catching his passes from, I think that's a big, big, you know, big thing to like kind of watch out for. Yeah, you know, and the Bears also added another speedster in Trevor Davis, who notably was with the Green Bay Packers and then the Raiders. Um, you know, this is kind of one of the more under the radar signings. I, I I really struggle to even believe that he'll make the team because uh, the Bears already have a fairly deep wide receiver core currently. But again, both speedsters, both have a ton of quickness. Um and I, I think that the Bears right now are really trying to score a lot off of Nick Foles' deep ball, which has arguably been his best trait as a quarterback. Um, he throws a very accurate and uh, very, I mean, he's got a lot of arm strength too. So it's one of his best assets as a quarterback. And the Bears are definitely trying to add up on some some wide receivers that they can have some real um, some some real lineups with a lot of speedsters in it. You know, you have Cordell Patterson already. You just drafted Mooney. Um, both guys are four, four low four three, four two guys. Um, then you bring in Trevor Davis and Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn, uh, notably a, a four two eight guy. Um, I, I think I, I think I like where the what the Bears are trying to do currently. Uh, but I, I ultimately I wish that we would have invested more in the wide receiver position um, when it comes to earlier in free agency or earlier in the draft, just so that you know, we can have a more sure starter and not really be going through this rotation, you know? Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, you brought up the point that some of these players, you know, 
like Trevor Davis, you know, he might not make it past like camp or whatever training mm-hmm. camp looks like, you know, whatever these roster cuts are going to look like this year. I don't, I don't even think that Ted Ginn is necessarily, you know, immune to that no. either. You know, yeah, I think that even Ted Ginn could be cut. So I think there's going to be a lot of working out and really kind of seeing which one of those receivers works out um, best for, you know, for the offense. But I think we can move on to the other side of the ball now and talk about mm-hmm. one of the other, this kind of the more recent news with yeah. Sean Gibson. Yeah, they added to Sean Gibson. And, you know, you kind of sent me a little thing on Twitter, you know, showing me some of the, the plays that he make. And he looks pretty, pretty dynamic. You know, he kind of plays very instinctive, which is something that, you know, me and you have been talking about, the, mm-hmm. you know, with that compliment to Eddie Jackson is kind of the safety that the, that the Bears need. And it seems almost sure that this is going to be the replacement um, in that strong safety role. So, And I actually think that this could turn out to be an upgrade um, from HaHa Clinton Dix, who went to Dallas. I don't know the, the contract numbers right now, but Trashawn Gibson was just released from the Texans uh, like two days ago. Um, and he's a player that has a very, a very, a very notable past in the NFL. He was a top 100 player, I think twice, maybe it was just once, but he was a top 100 player. He was a Pro Bowler with the Browns. I mean, he's a player who's always been a reliable safety. Now he's played free safety most of his career. I think putting him at this age, he's he just turned 30. I think putting him in the strong safety position for the Bears is actually going to be a huge benefit to us. Um, and I think that he's really going to be able to be that dynamic, strong safety that's, A, extremely athletic. He's extremely quick. He is able to get his hands on the ball. I mean, he's I think he has like 29 career interceptions or something, something crazy like that. He had three interceptions last year. Just a really dynamic player for the Bears. And, you know, when you when you look at all we've invested in the defensive line, um, a player who is likely going to be picking off a couple passes this year for the Bears. Yeah, yeah, and before um, I think Gibson also had a spell with the with the Jaguars. Too, yes, and he did quite notably good down there, and yeah, very notably and kind of you know Jalen Ramsey got a lot of the credit when that secondary was very prolific, mm-hmm. but you know he was definitely a very important member of that as well. And I think it is just a matter of being a better system fit, right? Because I think when Haha Clinton Dix was brought in, me and you were both very excited about that mm-hmm. last year. You know, and it's because of the quality of player that he is, and I still think the Ha Clinton Dix is a very quality player. But, you know, complimenting to Eddie Jackson and his ability is kind of almost like a little bit too much of the same. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think it's quite the same. You know, Eddie Jackson can definitely make interceptions, but, you know, it seems like um, to Sean Gibson, like he kind of plays a little bit more. Like I, I could definitely see him finishing with more interceptions than Eddie Jackson. You know, not yeah, saying that Eddie Jackson would have a worse year, but. You know, just the way things work, and you know, we'll see how it, it shakes out. And obviously, right, you said that you know he played free safety most of his career, so we'll see if it's a struggle, a little bit of a transition. But I, I think that it's a good fit right now. I'm definitely excited to see how that works out. I mean, looking at Treshawn Gibson, uh, I mean, the Bears have shown in the past that they they don't need a player that's a great talent at that strong safety position, notably. Adrian Amos, I don't want to drag his name through the mud, but he's not a player that you look at and you're like, wow, that that's a dude, you know, that's a that's a guy who can really roam the field. He can really lay hits. Adrian Amos was never that. He was a player that stuck to his assignments, um, did well in underneath coverage and really played in a role to the best of his ability. Now, I, I was the number one proponent of saying that the Bears should move on from Adrian Amos and not give him a contract like the Packers Gave him, which I think if that was on the Bears roster, uh, the Bears salary cap right now would be hor- horrible for us. Um, I-, I think that Treshawn Gibson offers a level above Adrian Amos when it comes to instincts, being able to keep your eyes on the quarterback, um, athleticism. And I also think that he's, uh, he's a player who can, he's a veteran in the NFL. He knows his assignments. He, he's very good at that. And he's not going to make a lot of mistakes, which is even bigger. I think the Texans end up letting him go because they're not planning on having all that great of a defensive backfield this year. They, their defensive backs have been fairly poor. I mean, they let Honey Badger go. Uh, they now Treshawn Gibson, not that they're on the same level, but, uh, it just kind of goes to show that they view that they can, they can let these defensive pieces go and still put together a somewhat competitive unit on that side. So I'm extremely excited for this signing. 
that was the one really point on the Bears roster where I looked at and I was like, well, I mean, I guess we have Deion Bush, but I'd really like to have a player that's a little bit more exciting than that. And with Trishon Gibson, you have a true starter at that position. And it really rounds out an extremely deep defensive backcourt for the Bears now. I mean, you look at the from the cornerback position to the free safety position to the to the strong safety position. I mean, you see talent at every level and I just you know even if this this secondary gets knocked gets a little bit uh knocked around and and some players are some players are injured this cornerback and defensive backcourt all together is going to be a really strong good unit for the Bears for years to come. <laughs> 